to this time of studying and thinking about God's Word and particularly being concerned about God's will for our lives. I'd like to have just a brief word of prayer and then we're going to study doors. And I don't mean we're looking at ones that are in a building. We're talking about doors that God opens. Let's, let's pray for a moment. Our Father, we thank You that You care about us and that You want to work closely with us in our life and our life plan. We pray, Father, that You would help us to have the faith to let You lead and accomplish what You want to do through us. Help us to put ourselves in Your hands so that we can do service to Your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I spent some time studying doors. There's several doors that are, you know, it's like the door was closed and locked when uh, Mary came running back to the disciples and she couldn't get in. <laughs> that's a door. But that's not the kind of doors we're talking about. We're talking about a door that is an opportunity for our lives. It's a metaphor is what, the way we're using this. And uh, everybody has those opportunities before them. Some people don't believe it. And consequently, they never open a door of opportunity and they just kind of locked down, stopped, stymied at that point. Doors can be entrances or exits. My first example of this will be including an exit. They can be a bridge to something great, or they can be a barrier to the things you need to do, or they can be a trap door where Satan is ready to fall on you. The key to this Remember this throughout the time we're talking. The key to it is to depend on God for what you do. You must depend on God for what you do. You must ask. You must ask often. Daily prayer, minimally, is necessary for us if we're going to grow in Christ. Now, I suggest, and every example I use is an example from my own life that I've lived out. Don't turn it off. It's not that bad. But, but it's, it's an example of how God has worked. And He's worked through this method. And that's the fleece method. Not that you're fleecing somebody, but that Gideon took a fleece, a sheepskin, and laid it out and said, Now God, if you want me to lead your army, then you leave that thing dry and make all the ground wet. Boom! It was done the next day. So he went out and he said, Okay, God, I'm not too sure of just one shot like that, so I'm going another one. And he said, Let's reverse it. And God did. And then he knew he had to lead the army. That's what laying a fleece out is. And you pray specifically. Specifically in that. You lay out one, two, ten years of being a preacher. And we're going to cover quite a bit of ground that way. We need then to learn to pray specifically so God can lead in our decision-making process. Number one, every time there is a door, it is a door of opportunity to make a decision. It's a metaphor for choices, if you please. We discover early in life that we can walk through doors or we can walk past doors. You've done it, and I've done it. But we need to make a decision every time we come to a door. That's what we're talking about. It's the point of making a decision in your life. Now, some doors are exits. Uh, I was preaching at a church where there had been some trouble, and I was not the trouble. But two of the elders decided they wanted me to leave. And they were the two that I thought were my best friends. That was what really got me. But there were eight others that just sat on them. Boom. Well, these guys started tearing up elders' meetings. They were tearing up the church. They were causing all kinds of problems. And I realized that because they were going to make an issue of it and they were going to stay, that I might need to go. That might be the best thing to do. So I decided to put it in God's hands. And I prayed about it. And then I went, first of all, to an elder in a nearby church that I trusted to know how to tighten up the lips and not talk too much. And 
he gave me some advice in the process of it all. He heard me out, and then he said, okay, let's understand something. You've got two children to take care of. I can see prosperity, and I can see disaster, you know, but it's not usually that clear cut. And so there I am at that church, not knowing, just knowing God put me there. And the church is starting to grow. They had been through a difficult time, and they were, they were ready, and man, it started to take off. It was great. But I still didn't know why that particular place. So now we have a fleece is a good thing. And you can go to outside people for advice to help you know about going through the door. But a door may represent different things. Sometimes it's an opportunity from God and it doesn't look like it to you. That's the way that place looked to me when I first went there. It just didn't look right to me. <laughs> I had accepted a call to a church where I knew there was a problem elder in the church. He was the oldest elder and he was outspoken to say the very least. And I prayed about it. I said, God, I know this is the opportunity. I know that You've brought this about so that I can go there and I can preach and I can help this church grow. I, I, I really believe that. You're going to use me in this place and it's going to happen. <laughs> a week before I was to arrive and move into the parsonage, I got a phone call. And one of the church members said, we have terrible news. I said, what's that? I thought, oh, no, they're, they're rescinding my call. Oh, no. He said, terrible news. Brother so-and-so got mad in an elders meeting again and began screaming and yelling and fell over dead with a heart attack. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry for that. I'll be praying for you. He said, yeah, I'll do that. Just keep it in mind. But there it was. I don't think I could have handled him. I would have tried, but I don't know if I could have handled him. It was such a challenge. And there was another challenge that went with it, see. On top of that, they'd had two pretty decent ministers in there. I knew them. And they both had failed to take that church to any great amount of growth. And now the church was well below 50. They were $10,000 in debt. They had a church willing to pay it off. If in six months, they could be in the black. And that's the challenge. That was also a, a difficult thing to face. But we just prayed that God would turn it around, and God did. And He, he, he turned it around in an interesting way. A guy came out the door of the church Sunday morning. He said, Do you guys have a softball team? And I knew where he was from. I didn't know for sure who he was. But Wayne said... I'd really like to be a part of a church that had a softball team in the church league. I said, okay, you're in charge of getting the team together. Now, we didn't have anything much more than old people and me there. I mean, that was just a fact of a few youth, but very few. And I couldn't see being able to field a team, but I put it on him. I said, call me this week. He said, I'll do it. He did. I told him, I said, if you're going to bring people into the team, it's good to bring in ball players. He said, oh, I intend to bring in ball players. <laughs> he was on an elite team that traveled. <laughs> and he recruited from that league guys that were willing to go to church to be a part of a team. And they had to attend two out of every four Sundays. That was the requirement. And we won the city championship that year. <laughs> Smallest church playing in the league. But they were the right recruits, and we baptized people after people after people because of that witness. And it was just God put it together. I didn't see how we were going to grow that much. And we grew that much. Keep taking the opportunities that God has for you. Watch for the trap doors. <laughs> Satan says of us, but watch for it. If an open door is from God, it will not contradict what God said in the Word. It will not. 
God's Word is true forever. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but My words will not pass away. My words will never disappear. No matter how exciting a door looks, no matter how good an opportunity looks, do not go through it if it violates anything that you believe is a part of God's will from His Word. I'll tell you a thing that you can do to, to be sure you're doing it. Get yourself a concordance if you lack the knowledge of Bible verses and go in there and look up things relating to what you're wanting to do and see what God says about doing it. And maybe that will help you be convinced that He wants you to do something or He'd like for you to back off for a while or He'd like for you to just squelch it. Sometimes God shuts a door for my protection. <laughs> do you know how I wound up here? God shut a door for my protection. We went out and met with a church in Kansas, a rich church. Plenty of money. Good salary. Big building. They were having a little trouble getting it filled at that point. But I thought, man, this is it. And I was excited about it and ready to make the move. And the guy in the next town over was a superintendent of schools. I, there was a job to be there for my wife. It was just great. It just looked good. And there was something about that that didn't ring. There was something about that that didn't work. And praying about it, by the time we drove from there home, I had serious doubts. By two days after that, I knew it wasn't right. It just wasn't right. There were things about it that were wrong. And one thing was, was I was a little enamored of getting a huge raise. <laughs> and I knew that was wrong. I mean, it's not bad to have a raise. But still. So, I prayed about it some more. We had a file to give him an answer. And a guy up here was preaching at this place. And I'd known him for years and years. And Ronnie called me up and said, I need somebody to fill a pulpit for me Sunday. Can you at least do it one Sunday? I said, yeah. He said, I, I'm, I'm getting too much there and I've got other things that I've got to do. And he, he was involved with a whole bunch of things that he went around representing and preaching and so forth. And great guy. And I said, sure, I don't have anything down this week. I'll go. And so I showed up here at this church. <laughs> and I was given the call here. And I had no other call pending. And I was asking God to, you know, get with this program, get me get me settled somewhere. And so we came here. And the reason that God did that was I needed protection. I needed help. And he sent me here so this church would be a help to me. Because this is a loving, loving, loving congregation. My wife came down with ALS within one month of the time that we came here. And I offered to resign, and they said, no, no, keep preaching. And they loved both of us through five difficult years. That was God protecting me. Sometimes you have to listen. He doesn't put you exactly where you think. But He puts you where you definitely need to be. Noah got on the ark. I don't think Noah was in favor of having to build it in the first place. God put the animals in there and Noah put his family on there and God shut the door, the Scriptures say. He protected Noah from the flood. That's what he got when he went through that door. God may want you in a new area of service or doing something different, but remember, He will protect you from things that you cannot do. And He will put you where you need to be. Maybe you're like I was. You're going to turn up needing a loving place to hang your hat. God will open doors if I open doors for others. I had a man in my church. I talked him into working with the younger youth group, 6th grade and down. And old Pat did it. I mean, he was good. The kids were loving it. The program was growing. Everything was just tremendous. And I got a phone call from a little church nearby. And they, they were always doing this to me. They'd call up and say, Do you have a preacher you could send us for a week or two? <laughs> well, yeah. 
I said, I've got this guy that I'll send out there for a week. Wasn't any problem to send him for one week. And he went and he preached. And right after church, they held a meeting and said, we want you to keep coming here. And they called him to the ministry there. He was shook up. He didn't know if he should do it or not. And I said, Pat, I'll help you any way I can. But I believe this is what God wants for you. I see that as an open door for you, even if you don't. You get the picture? You need to do that for people. Okay, so he settles in there. He spends maybe a couple of years there. He's enjoying ministering there. And in the evening, he still comes back and runs our youth programs. And he's having a ball. And then this church, several miles away, but near one of our Bible colleges called me. <laughs> and I called up Pat. Told him I was going to do that. And I'd call him back. And I called up Pat. And I said, Pat, you need to come over here. Let's sit down and talk. Bring your wife. So they came over. They came over to our house anyway quite often. And I said, Pat, it's time for you to go in the ministry. <laughs> and he looked at me like... I said, I'm serious. He said, Bill, I've got a good job. He did. I've got three children. He did. I have a wife sitting right here that may be about ready to hit one of us. And then maybe you first. <laughs> And she didn't, thank God. <laughs> but I explained to him, I said, Pat, I've talked with them. I've really scouted this thing out pretty good. They have a parsonage. All bills paid. They have a decent salary. Not quite what you're making, but enough that you can make it. They will give you all the time you need to commute to college and study in addition to preaching there. You'll not get another shot like this. This is golden opportunity. You guys pray about it. We prayed together. They went out and prayed about it for a couple of days. He came back and said, okay, turn my name in. Give him my number. And they went. And he graduated from Bible college. And he's been preaching, unless he's retired, <laughs> he's been preaching ever since. I helped him. And I believe that's why God helps me. I believe that. Be generous and you'll be prosperous. Help others and you will be helped. Proverbs 11.25 One last thing, just as quickly as I can. Sometimes God opens the door just to crack and gives you a view of what's coming in the future. Just a, just a picture, a glimpse of it. A teaser, if you like, maybe. I don't know. In 1965, I graduated from college. I was preaching at a church in northeastern Oklahoma near the city of Tulsa. In 1965, the North American Christian Convention came to the city of Tulsa. The local arrangements chairman was the guy who had been my youth minister and now was the minister of my home church. I get immediately dragged in to run Bible Bowl. I'm 21 years old. I felt fortunate to get through it. I liked it. It was neat. And I watched that. I was impressed. They had a stack this thick, this thick of duties and jobs to do. And that local arrangements chairman, my previous minister, had that stack. And he assigned people from all over the place to do those jobs. And 15,000 people came to town. And they handled it like a breeze. God blessed. And I watched that and I said, that's really neat. I love the way that all came together. That's really neat. And it locked up in my brain. Lord, I'm going to pray this and I really mean this. If at any time again I have an opportunity to help the North American Christian Convention, that's our national gathering and forum and preaching thing, then I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll not even hesitate. I will do the skimpiest, dumbest job or anything that comes just to make it happen. And I attended North Americans after that quite a bit. And then one day, I was preaching at Green Valley. I'd been there three years, and I was saying, why this place? Remember? And the North American announced they were coming to Kansas City that year. In one of our services the executive director of the North American Christian Convention showed up. In fact, he came in the door and grabbed 
one of the greeters and said, can you take me to Bill Meyer? And they did. And he said, we're here to visit. Put us in a good Sunday school class. And it was just right at time. I ran him into a Sunday school class where I had a teacher that I had just finished training. And I knew that he would be good with it. And I told him that I, that was the case. And the guy did a good job. He was always good. But... So he and his wife, Thelma, went there. And then after church, they came over and said, Now, the church is over. We want to take you and your wife to dinner. And we went to dinner. And we got pretty well through the meal. And he leaned over and he said, Bill, I want you to be the local arrangements chairman of the North American Christian Convention. And then I could see God taking that from way back there in 65 and giving me a glimpse and then opening doors and making changes. And think of all the places I could have gone and didn't go and everything else. And there I was with that opportunity. And I praise God for using me that way because I was ready to go through that door. And I did. In fact, I did it twice. They came back about ten years later and there we were again. I also had the chance to be the president of the Missouri Christian Convention, which is the gathering of all of our churches in the state. There's maybe 450. What a blessing to be able to serve on a different scale than I have been serving on. And I loved serving like I do now with the local church. People, God is good. Habakkuk 2.3 says this, at the time I have decided, my words will come true. He says, I'm going to take action. You can trust what I say about the future. It may take a long time, but keep waiting. It will happen. It will happen. God is good. He is faithful to us. He plans for us. Folks, look for the open doors. Pray. Lay out the fleece. Talk with God. He wants to bless you. And God may just give you a glimpse of your destiny while you're waiting for that to happen, God is good. He wants you close. He wants you dependent upon Him. And maybe occasionally He'll show you a little bit of something that's to come. Dream. Dream big. All of you have doors in front of you right now. I do too. I pray that you'll have the discernment to know which ones to walk through and the courage to walk through them and make them the right ones, and the generosity to open doors for others. But above all else, I hope and pray that you know how to talk with your God and place yourself in His hands and lay a fleece before Him and let Him lead you where you need to go. Let Him lead you to minister where you need to minister. And please don't say, I can't do it. There's nothing I can do. Ask God, and He'll show you doors of service that you can go through and be blessed. doesn't matter how old you are or young you are. God will lead you if you want Him to ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. And God will pour out good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. That's the way He works. I pray that you're blessed. I hope you weren't terribly bored by my historic review. But those are ways that God worked. God's been working miracles in my life like that since I was a kid. And I praise Him. I praise Him. He's good. God bless you.